Sanyong's much improved Corando is still the only real choice if you're looking for something in the crossover or small SUV class offering proper diesel towing power and decent off-roading prowess for less than £20,000. This revised version gets an even torquier 2.2 litre Euro 6 diesel engine with more power and lower running costs. A unit buyers have the option of pairing with a smoother 6-speed Azin automatic gearbox. Plus, there's still that class-leading limitless 5-year warranty. It all makes this car well worth a look. Think of a Korean car maker and it's a reasonable bet that you won't be thinking about this one, which must be uh, frustrating for Sangyong since the company is actually one of the longest established of all the Asian brands. Recent years have seen this manufacturer re-establishing itself in Europe, armed with investment from Indian owners of Mahindra, seeking to build on a heritage that goes all the way back to 1954. Since 1983, one of the maker's most important models has been badged Corando. It still is. Which makes this one of the longest serving models in its segment. Despite that, it's a car with a badge and a design that still has little recognition across the market segment in which it must compete. That for lifestyle orientated small SUVs. We're talking about the budget end of this sector, of course. So cars like Kia Sportage and Hyundai's Tucson rather than Toyota RAV4s or Honda CRVs. And five seat only models, since that's what this is. Sangyong also believes the Corando may appeal to crossover buyers, people looking at cars like Nissan's Qashqai or Peugeot's 3008. With its smart Tivoli model, the brand has already established itself as a contender amongst smaller vehicles in this segment. Customers looking at that car but wanting something a little larger might well, the company thinks, uh, be tempted to end up behind the wheel of this one. Either way, the Corando certainly seems to offer an awful lot for the money and always has ever since it first arrived here back in 2011, complete with sleek Italian Giugiaro styling and a powerful purpose-designed 2-litre diesel engine. This was the first Sangyong designed to swap a heavy-duty ladder-framed chassis for more car-like monocoque underpinnings in pursuit of a sensible and more rewarding handling all along with a high specification and pricing that made opposition models look needlessly expensive. Since then, virtually every key aspect of this model's design has been significantly enhanced. The styling smartened for the 2014 model year and the engine updated to 2.2 litre Euro 6 status at the end of 2015. The result is the rejuvenated Corando that we're going to look at here. The important news with this revised Corando is the installation of its larger but somehow more frugal 2.2 litre Euro 6 diesel engine. Sangyong has a history of borrowing other people's mechanicals when it comes to underbonnet technology, but this freshly developed EXDI220 unit is entirely the company's own work, developing a pokey 178 PS, a big step up from the previous 149 PS 2 litre unit. This, remember, in a segment where every other sub £20,000 competitor offers less than 120 PS. There's a slight running cost penalty to pay in exchange for this kind of grunt, of course, but in return, you get the kind of performance and pulling power that you'd otherwise have to find around £25,000 for in this kind of car. Sounds tempting, doesn't it? You can get this uh, surprisingly effective power plant mated to either two or four wheel drive. But either way, you're looking at a car that'll be significantly quicker than just about all its competitors. 60 achievable from rest in 9.9 .9 seconds on the way to a theoretical maximum of 115 miles an hour. Now to put this showing into some kind of perspective, that's about four seconds and six miles an hour quicker than the kind of 1.7 litre CRDI diesel uh, Kia Sportage or Hyundai Tucson that you'll pay significantly more for. The only real downside lies with refinement, and despite recent efforts to improve this, the Corando still remains a little noisier than its rivals under hard acceleration. In normal day-to-day -day use, though, most will probably find their car to be acceptable in that respect.
you really feel the advantages of this torquier engine in terms of pulling power, particularly when it comes to things like towing. This car has a massive 400 newton meters of torque, which means that it can tug two tons. To give you some perspective, the 1.7 litre Kia and Hyundai rival models I've just mentioned can manage this 1.4 tonnes. That's quite a difference. This Ssangyong also has a decently capable 80 kilogram tow bar limit. It is, in short, the most powerful towing car in its class. Not surprising then that in 2014, the Caravan Club voted it a tow car of the year class winner. They reckon that there's nothing else in this segment that's a better load lugger. That'll sell this car to many potential buyers right off the bat, whatever its other attractions. These people will also probably want the torque on demand 4x4 system fitted to the all-wheel drive variant that we're trying here. It's one of those setups that's constantly able to shunt torque around to the wheel that has most grip so that the power is always used efficiently. Unlike some of its rivals, this particular system also has a lock mode, selectable should you be on very loose or slippery surfaces, or find yourself with this Sangyong somewhere you really shouldn't have ventured in the first place. Here, drive is allocated equally between front and rear wheels to give you the best possible chance of extricating yourself. Not that this should suggest a Corando to be a fully-fledged off-roader. It isn't. Many previous Sangyong models have been, but to facilitate that, they've needed to use tough, ladder-framed chassis setups, something which has sometimes meant pickup quality standards of ride and handling. That would have got this Corando nowhere in tarmac comparisons with Qashqai-like crossovers and soft roading style SUVs. Hence the Korean company's decision at this model's original introduction to use a more car-like monocoque chassis for the very first time. It's still enough though to make this car as capable off-piste as most owners will ever need it to be, with an approach angle of 22.8 degrees, a departure angle of 28.2 degrees and a ramp angle of 18.5 degrees. It's surprising though that the engineers haven't fitted the kind of hill descent control system that's really now quite commonplace in this segment to, uh, to slither down steep slopes. There is a hill holder clutch though that'll aid you starting off up them. All of this is pretty important because the Corando is one of the few models in this segment that the majority of buyers prefer to order with four-wheel drive. Its tarmac performance still remains crucial though, especially if you're one of those who would prefer the greater efficiency of the two-wheel drive version. So, how does it perform on a paved surface? Well, around the corners, it's not quite as sharp as one of the class-leading contenders in this segment, we have to admit. The electric power steering seems to have been primarily geared for off-road use, which inevitably means that it'll feel a little vaguer than the helms offered in more car-like rivals. Having said that, if you're not a driving enthusiast, and few bars of this uh, kind of car are, then you're probably going to find this model's ride and handling balance to be perfectly adequate. If all you do is cruise around on half throttle anyway, why buy a car purpose designed for country lane cornering? And if you're of that mindset, then this car's six-speed automatic transmission option will probably be quite tempting, uh, especially as the standard six-speed manual box can be a bit notchy. The auto transmission now on offer here has been uh, provided for Sangyong by a specialist at ASIN and is notably smoother in its shifts than the previous auto transmission was. It's another sign of the more mature all-round package that the Coranda can now offer. This modern era Corando wasn't only the first Sangyong to feature more car-like monocoque underpinnings, it was also the first one with styling that you'd really be quite pleased to see on your driveway. Now for this, the South Koreans had Il Maestro, Giorgetto Giugiaro to thank, a man known as one of the great automotive stylists and responsible for designs as diverse and enduring as the DeLorean and the Fiat Panda. In the clean, sculpted look of the original version of this car, there was certainly evidence of the master's deft touch. And the updated versions that Sangyong has brought us since haven't deviated too far from that, simply modernising the look with things like sleek projector headlamps and LED daytime running lights. The idea is to create a sharper, more contemporary look. 
get up close and personal and owners of earlier Corando models might notice some of the changes that Sangyong has made to this improved version. Externally, it now sports clear glass direction indicators flanking a smarter piano black radiator grille that features additional chrome detailing on this top ELX variant. In profile, things are much as before with roof rails and pronounced wheel arches supplying the necessary SUV cues and a lower style increase giving the flank some shape. This time around there are smarter 16 or 17 inch alloy wheels on mainstream variants and some particularly attractive diamond cut 18 inch rims on this flagship version. We think this uh, Corando's best angle though is at the rear. A slick blend of uh, modern curves and creases set off on this revised model by restyled tail lamps. Most versions get this rear spoiler with its high mounted LED brake light and the whole effect is completed lower down by chrome plated twin exhaust pipes. Take a seat at the wheel and you find yourself surrounded by the kind of sharp, angular cabin styling you'll find in larger, pricier SUVs like Hyundai Santa Fe. It's certainly obvious that Sangyong has taken note of the way its Korean competitor brands have started to make better use of aluminium look trim and soft touch plastics. Even the artificial wood trim is a little nicer than it was before. The result is a far more inviting cabin than that of the original model. True, you might not think you're in a much more expensive Sportage or a Qashqai, but it's certainly a world away from the Bulgarian thrift store feeling you get sat in a Dacia Duster, the only other car in this segment able to approach this Corando's asking price. With this revised model, the major interior change is the upgraded infotainment technology, and provided you avoid Center dash dominated by the Sangyong Entertainment System's informative 7 inch color touchscreen via which you uh, access the usual stereo and phone functions. There's a link to a rear view camera, plus, you get audio streaming functionality from smart devices, along with a USB memory slot, an aux in port, and an HDMI port. Go for this top ELX version, and the TomTom SatNav is also built into the same setup. Getting comfortable at the wheel isn't a problem thanks to a height adjustable driver's seat and a reach and rake adjustable steering wheel through which you view two clear, simple instrument dials. Plus, thank goodness, there's a proper conventional handbrake rather than one of those fiddly electric button ones. The fascia soft touch plastics are nice to the touch. The silver and shiny black plastic inserts are quite well done and the switch gear feels uh, solid and well conceived. True, there are lower quality plastics further down if you look for them, but then that's the case in almost any car from this category. Storage is reasonably ample with a useful central cubby beneath the ventilation controls on the dash, a space in front of the gear stick, a pair of cup holders and a practically sized storage box between the front seats. You also get an overhead compartment for your sunglasses and decently shaped side door pockets with recesses for bottles. Whatever you're feeling on the front seat ambiance, you can't argue with the amount of rear seat space on offer. This is the only car in this class, premium brand models included, able to come through transport three fully sized adults on the back seat for any distance. Long journeys helped by the fact that the seat backs recline, while the seats themselves are even heated on this top variant. Rear legroom is quite plentiful, aided for the passenger in the middle of the rear seat by the fact that unlike many of its rivals, this car has no bulky transmission tunnel. It's this rear seat space that could well tempt buyers of Sangyong's smaller Tivoli crossover model into this larger Corando. And the same applies when it comes to luggage room. Raising the tailgate reveals a 486 litre space that's 63 litres bigger than that of the Tivoli. More importantly, perhaps, it's also significantly bigger than the capacity provided by a more comparable rival like Nissan's Qashqai, though here there's no clever dual height boot floor to help you make the most of it. The rear parcel shelf that was previously rather meanly deleted on entry level models is now standard across the range too and you can stow it neatly in the underfloor boot compartment when you're not using it. 
If you need extra room, then pushing forward the 60-40 split folding rear bench reveals 1,312 litres. So, to the value proposition on offer here. This Corando is offered in one five-door, five-seat body shape with power coming from a 178 PS version of this Korean brand's own 2.2-litre EXDi 220 diesel engine. As for prices, well, they range up to nearly £23,000 if you're going for a top version like this one. But the important news is that you can get this Sangyong in base two-wheel drive SE form for as little as £16,000. That's an eye-catching figure if you thought you couldn't afford a car of this kind. Most buyers opt to find the £1,500 premium necessary to stretch up to the smarter looking mid-range EX version and either way there's the option of specifying your car with four-wheel drive for an extra £1,500 as over 60% of Coranda customers actually do. Uh, buyers wanting the top of the range ELX version that we're trying here have to have four-wheel drive which partly explains this variant's much higher asking price of at least £21,000. And you have to have this flagship version if you want the option of automatic transmission which is another £1,500 extra. As for the value proposition that creates, well, if you see this Corando as some kind of soft roading compact SUV, it'll look very good in an age where a 24 £1,000 budget is needed for the average Honda CRV or Toyota RAV4. Even more affordable cars in this class, like Hyundai's Tucson or Kia Sportage, will typically cost around £4,000 more, while offering you less power and towing capability. Sangong is also aiming this car at the larger cash car class end of the growing crossover market, a segment much more focused on two-wheel drive derivatives. The brand reckons it can undercut almost everything else with comparable power in that sector, even on a Corando with four-wheel drive included. And the figures certainly stack up. In fact, this Korean contender can even undercut most super mini-based crossover models, cars with much smaller bodies and feebler diesel engines. After all, the entry-level two-wheel drive version of this car is around £1,700 less than a Renault Capture DCI 110, over £2,500 less than a Peugeot 2008 Blue HDI 120 and around four and a half thousand pounds less than a Vauxhall Mocha 1.6 CDTI. Even slightly larger small crossovers like uh, Mitsubishi's ASX and Suzuki's SX4 S Cross both cost around 20,000 pounds in base diesel guys. In fact, the only way you could pay less than Sangyong is asking here for a car of this kind would be to go for the Renault engineered Dacia Duster. Now, for many, that won't be a very tempting option, given that the Dacia feels cheaper inside, offers you much feebler performance on and off-road, is not much use for heavy towing and will depreciate quicker. Plus, in comparable air-conditioned diesel form, it's only around £2,500 less expensive. Overall, then, you'll have to agree that this Corando really does offer more for your money. But will that bargain basement pricing leave you a little short when it comes to standard equipment? Well, apparently not. Even with base SE trim, you get LED daytime running lights, alloy wheels, tinted glass, electric heated power folding mirrors, all-round power windows and headlamp levelling. Inside, and there's air conditioning, a trip computer, cruise control and a six-speaker MP3 compatible CD stereo with Bluetooth and iPod connectivity and controls on the leather trim steering wheel. Plus, there's a USB memory slot and an aux in port. Really practical stuff includes a heated lower front windscreen element to help you get the wipers going on a frosty day, headlamps that stay on just long enough to light up the way to your front door, hill start assist to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions, and to help you at night, puddle lamps uh, shining down just below the door mirrors. Uh, this time around, base models also get two crucial features, a rear parcel shelf and a get-you-home spare tyre. Plus, Sangyong now also throws in roof rails and front fog lights across the range. 
move up to mid-range EX spec and the main change is the addition of this Korean brand's latest infotainment system. It's seven inch high definition color touchscreen offering the usual stereo and phone functions. Plus there's a link to a rear view camera and smart devices will be able to use audio streaming. Other EX features include privacy glass, rear parking sensors, a rear spoiler with a high mounted LED stoplight and larger 17 inch alloy wheels. Inside there are heated front seats and an automatic climate control feature for the air conditioning. Up for this flagship ELX 4x4 variant and that kit tally grows substantially. Outside you can expect to find extra chrome detailing and lovely 18 inch diamond cut alloy wheels. Inside you get leather seats that are electrically powered in the front and also heated in the rear plus TomTom -tom satellite navigation. Whichever Coranda variant you choose, the main option is metallic paint and many buyers of the four-wheel drive versions will want a tow bar. There are also various roof rack systems, a cycle carrier and a protection mat for the load area. We would also want to pay extra for a full-size spare wheel, an important feature to have on any kind of SUV. Safety wise, you can expect to find twin front side and curtain airbags, anti whiplash head restraints, tyre pressure monitoring and Isofix child seat fastenings on the outer rear seats. Uh, to try and make sure that you never have to use any of that stuff, there are the usual electronic driving aids. So ABS braking with EBD, electronic brake force distribution to make it more effective. Panic stops will be advertised to following motorists via an emergency stop signal that flashes the rear lights when you slam on the anchors. Plus there's an ESP stability control system with ARP active rollover protection. You'd expect this improved Corando's larger, more powerful 2.2 litre diesel engine to be less efficient to run than its 2 litre predecessor. In fact, the reverse is true. Where the old 147 PS version of this car managed 47.1 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 147 grams per kilometre of CO2 in two wheel drive form, this 178 PS Euro 6 model improves that showing to 53.3 miles per gallon and 139 grams per kilometre. It's a similar story if you go for the four wheel drive version. The previous version showing 45.6 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 157 grams per kilometre of CO2 is here improved to 48.7 miles per gallon and 152 grams per kilometre. Go for this six speed automatic model and the figures are 41.5 miles per gallon, 177 grams per kilometre. It's at this point that usually I try and give you some perspective as to how this showing matches up against the competition. But Sangyong's value pricing makes that really rather difficult to do. The kind of uh, compact SUV and family size crossover class models that you could buy for Corando money are certainly more affordable to run. But that's because they come with much feebler, smaller power plants that are of course more economic. Ultimately, it really comes down to what you want. What else? Well, insurance is rated at Group 24D for the entry level uh, SE two wheel drive version and Group 26D for this top ELX 4x4 variant. On all other models, you'll be looking at a Group 25D rating. Service intervals are every year or 12,500 miles, but perhaps the best bit is the peace of mind that comes as standard with this car thanks to the Korean brand's impressively complete class leading five year limitless mileage warranty. Limitless meaning the lack of the kind of irritating maximum mileage condition that many other brands impose in their small print. As you'd expect, the Sangyong cover deals with all the major mechanical components, including the wheel bearings, uh, the suspension joints and bushes, steering joints, shock absorbers, and even the audio system. Wearable components such as clutch discs and brake friction materials that could have their life reduced by poor driving are covered for one year or 12,000 miles, while the battery and the paintwork are covered for three years. Korea can do. That's apparently what this word means. And it seems appropriate. After all, it's hard to think of a car maker that has come so far so quickly as Sangyong. This Corando is the most accessible model the company makes and feels even more class competitive in this revised 2.2 litre guise. 
Yes, as the brand itself would admit, this remains a work in progress. But the signs with this car are that this Korean mark is learning quickly just what European customers really want. Already, when it comes to things like pulling power, rear passenger space and sheer value for money, this Corando can take on and in many cases beat the best of its rivals in the crossover and compact SUV sectors. It's better off-road than many of them too. If in future it could be a little sharper to drive with a little more running cost efficiency and interior quality thrown in, then established rivals really would have something to fear. Even as it stands though, this Sangyong is a difficult option to ignore if you need a car of this kind. It can powerfully tow, will more comfortably transport five people than direct rivals can, and offers up plenty of kit on a tight budget. You'll just have to get used to explaining to people what it is. And who knows, you might even end up suggesting that they try one. <laughs>